let's talk a little bit about antibiotics. I think that antibiotics get a little bit of a bad rap, and, and there's a couple reasons I think that, that this is. Um, partially, it's the fact that antibiotics can be a little hard on the body, and um, if we're taking that for a long period of time, that can present, present some problems. Um, the other thing is, is that we do find that a fair amount of people that take antibiotics for chronic Lyme disease don't necessarily get completely better um, just taking antibiotics. So there's some thoughts out there that maybe antibiotics alone aren't the way to go. And, you know, I do find that in some cases there are other things that are needed. But there is definitely a utility for antibiotics still. And in this video, we're going to talk a little bit about what some of those antibiotics are, why we use them, how they work, and how they can help someone that is um, dealing with Lyme disease. Azithromycin is an intracellular antibiotic that blocks a process called transpeptidation. Transpeptidation results in stronger cell walls, so inhibiting this process causes bacteria to become unstable, leading to osmotic lysis, or basically the cell explodes due to an inability to keep water out. Azithromycin is a good choice for fighting Lyme and Babesia. It can also be effective against Bartonella, especially in combination with other medications such as rifampin and methylene blue. Azithromycin has good penetration into the tissues, but not great into the cerebral spinal fluid. Rifampin is known as one of the antibiotics for Bartonella, but it is also good at treating Lyme. It has efficacy against Lyme biofilms, making it a dual threat against Lyme and co-infections. It works by blocking RNA transcription inside the bacteria. With this process inhibited, the bacteria cannot produce the proteins it needs to survive. It has very good penetration across the blood-brain barrier, making it a good choice for neurolyme. Probably the most common side effect is due to its red color. It is partially excreted in the urine, turning it an orange color. These medications are known as cell wall antibiotics. Their mechanism of action is to inhibit bacterial cell wall synthesis. This will eventually cause lysis of the cell. These medications cross the blood-brain barrier, so are good choices for neurolyme. Rocephin is an IV or intramuscular drug only, whereas ceftonir and cefuroxime can be given orally. The biggest difference between ceftonir and cefuroxime is that ceftonir comes in a capsule form, while cefuroxime is a big honking horse pill. Both are good choices though, but cefuroxime is definitely a little more difficult to swallow. Rocephin does require some extra monitoring and precaution, as it can cause gallbladder sludge and can be hard on the kidneys. Monitoring liver and kidney function is important. Within the tetracycline class of antibiotics is one of the most classic antibiotics used for Lyme disease, doxycycline. This is especially true in acute Lyme disease. The mechanism of action is similar to that of azithromycin, causing cell membrane instability and lysis. Doxycycline does cross the blood-brain barrier, so it can be used in neurolyme. The most well-known side effect is that of photosensitivity. It makes your skin more sensitive to the sun, so you have to be careful during the summer months. Minocycline is similar to doxycycline, its mechanism of action is the same. One of the advantages of minocycline is that it is even better at crossing the blood-brain barrier. The typical dose of 100 mg twice a day is comparable to that of 200 mg of doxycycline twice a day. So, better penetration at a lower dose means potential for less stomach upset and side effects. Speaking of side effects, another advantage is that it is less likely to cause photosensitivity. You still have to be careful in the sun, but not to the same degree as doxycycline. There are a number of other antibiotics that can be used to treat Lyme and co-infections, including Bactrim, Metronidazole, Ciprofloxacin, and Levaquin. I tend to use these much less often, though, and prefer to combine the previous antibiotics along with some off-label medications, herbals, and supplements. So antibiotics are not necessarily a bad thing they have a utility, they have a purpose, and they work for a fair amount of people. 
they are not the only treatment option out there and certainly come with their own set of risks. So when we're thinking about treatment for chronic Lyme disease, we always consider this option, but we don't consider it as the only option. And we look at each individual um, differently and we wanna make sure that we give each individual the right treatment they need. Thank you.